Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. The Mortal Kombat universe is a pretty scary place, filled with unscrupulous characters of ill repute that would be far more comfortable decapitating you for looking in their general direction rather than greeting you a good day. One of the absolutely most despicable, evil, and quite frankly deplorable of all of these characters is the disgustingly terrifying, and let's be honest, extremely bloody ugly Shao Kahn. That's right folks, if you hadn't been able to work it out from the thumbnail to this video for some reason, today we are going to be delving into the evil backstory of Shao Kahn and finding out about the history of the nefarious, notorious, and infamously cheap Outworld Emperor. After all, I know you all love a bloody good villain. Yeah. Not making himself known to fans of the franchise until the first sequel, Mortal Kombat 2, Shao Kahn's original design was far different to the one we have become familiar with over the years. Originally, the idea was that all inhabitants of Outworld were descendants from the Takatan, which is the same species as Baraka. So, Shao was first depicted with no mask, showing off a Nosferatu-esque complexion and huge razor teeth, almost like a bigger, roided up version of Baraka himself. The idea of all Outworld dwellers being of the same species was eventually dropped, and we instead got the far more iconic design developed by the talented Mark Runyon, featuring the familiar body armour, horned helmet, and hammer that would make even Thor blush. The digitised version of Khan in Mortal Kombat 2 was played by professional bodybuilder Brian Glynn, who was supposedly a huge fan of the original game, and couldn't believe his luck when he was asked to appear in the sequel. As big a human as this man was with his impressively hulking frame, stature-wise he unfortunately just wasn't enough for the imposing final boss that he was portraying, so he was digitally stretched to make him significantly taller, thus towering over all of the other playable characters. Shao Kahn is often depicted wearing a fancy little red cape in promotional material and whatnot, but that part of his character design is absent from his original digitised depictions, and doesn't actually make an in-game appearance until Mortal Kombat Deception some years later. Other than a few small tweaks to his armour, and that weird little loincloth thing that covers his outworld junk, his look has remained largely consistent throughout the games, making him one of MK's most distinguishable and easily recognisable characters. As for this terrifying entity's nefarious origin story, it is the sort of evil normally only reserved for WWE's Kayentai, and begins with our plucky young genocidal maniac being selected as the protector of Outworld, much like Raiden's role as protector of Earth. Shao Kahn eventually became chief advisor to the ancient ruler of Outworld, the Dragonkin Onaga, and formed a destructive partnership with him which saw them expand their reach beyond Outworld. This would see them set out to conquer all of the other realms of the multiverse for themselves, the greedy buggers. Not one for sharing his toys or being out eviled, it wasn't long before Shao Kahn proved who the real evil one was and poisoned Onaga, thus taking the throne all for himself and cementing his place as the most feared being within the multiverse. After the events of the first Mortal Kombat game, in which Shang Tsung and his minions are defeated by the underdog Earth Realm, Shao Kahn evokes a clause which starts a rematch tournament with the stakes being set as ultimate domination of all realms, including Earth. That's if our pointer helmeted pal and his warriors win said tournament, of course. High stakes indeed. As intimidating as Khan is, ultimately he is defeated by the series' main babyface protagonist, Liu Kang, and is sent back to Outworld with his cape between his legs. It's not long, however, before he rears his massive ugly head again, as wouldn't you know it, he found a way to return once more to be the final boss for Mortal Kombat 3. Any gamers hoping for a less painful and unfair final boss this time around were left disappointed and probably with blisters on their fingers, as this iteration of the Outworld Ruler still remains notorious to this day, as one of the most brutal final boss fights ever. The MK3 story sees that sneaky Shang Tsung resurrect Queen Sindel in Earthrealm, which allows Shao Kahn to completely abandon the ancient Mortal Kombat tournament rules and invade Earth himself taking over billions of people's souls and merging the Earth and Outworld realms together in the process. 
that's quite a pickle that Raiden and his few remaining warriors are in. But wouldn't you know it, despite all of the odds being stacked against him, the high kicking hero Liu Kang managed to defeat that lanky old Shao Kahn for a second time, sending him back to Outworld and restoring Earth to its former state, Few. Shao was replaced as the main baddie by the corrupted elder god Sinek in Mortal Kombat 4, so there was no appearance in the franchise's first foray into 3D fighting but he was back for a cameo in 2002's Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, which was the first MK game not released to arcades and developed exclusively for home consoles. In this game, we see him killed by the Deadly Alliance of Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. And hold on, quick gaming fact here, I've just realised that the game features a Deadly Alliance and is called Deadly Alliance. That's bloody clever really, isn't it? Anyway, the subject of our video, Khan himself, is off in the prologue to the game, so there's not much to see here. Shao Kahn's next appearance and the debut in-game appearance of the previously mentioned fancy little red cape was an exclusive character in the GameCube and later the upgraded PSP version of Mortal Kombat Deception. Released between 2004 and 2006, this was also the first time we got to see him represented through the medium of glorious polygons. Well, as glorious as they got during the sixth generation of gaming anyway. As he had been relegated to bonus character status, Shao Kahn wasn't involved in the canon storyline of the game, but he would return as the ruler of Outworld in 2006's Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Sadly, not featuring Bruce Willis or any Aerosmith music whatsoever, MK Armageddon does however feature a story that is so meandering, hard to follow and all over the place that you really do need a PhD in absolute balmy nonsense to make much sense of it. For that reason, I am not going to go into too much detail here, but the main gist as pertains to our pal Shao is that he, along with Quan Chi, Shang Tsung and Onaga, have formed an extremely uneasy alliance to defeat the elemental deity, Blaze, so they can have off with his almost limitless power. MK Armageddon once again used polygonal models and 3D fighting, but took things much further in terms of presentation, extras and technological advancement. Not only does the game feature a huge roster of 62 selectable fighters, but there are a vast amount of options and gameplay modes, including a creator character mode, which was extremely novel for the time. It seems MK Armageddon serves as something of a precursor to the rather bloated experience that Mortal Kombat games have become in recent years. Shao Kahn's next appearance will be in the often overlooked crossover title, Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe, where he shows up not only in his original form, but also as an amalgamation of himself and Superman villain Darkseid, calling himself Dark Khan. Created when Raiden blasted Shao Kahn through an interdimensional portal at the same time as Superman was blasting Darkseid through one, this product of absolutely astounding coincidence serves as the game's main antagonist and final boss. After his defeat, Shao and Darkseid once again become separate entities, with Shao Kahn finding himself not only without any of his powers, but trapped and imprisoned within the Phantom Zone. You know what they say though, you can't keep a good man down, or evil man I guess in this case. So it wasn't long before our subject of this video managed to free himself along with anyone who had pledged allegiance to him from the aforementioned zone and was back to his old smashy hammer swinging ways. 2011 saw the release of the first in the new line of rebooted games from the series and also the return of Shao Kahn. The confusingly titled Mortal Kombat basically starts the whole timeline afresh from before the events of the first game, and acts as a retelling of the original story. Earth's protector, Raiden, is about to be killed by our pal Shao Kahn, but in a last ditch effort to save himself and the planet, he sends a telepathic message to his past self, telling him he must defeat Shao Kahn in this timeline to stop these future events from happening. Personally, if I had a way of communicating with my past self, I would tell them to go to Sega and tell them to put a DVD player in the Dreamcast. Personal fantasies aside, the MK reboot reverted back to the classic 2D fighting style of gameplay from the original trilogy, but without abandoning the advancements of the later Polygon games, as characters are rendered in 3D. Extremely positive reviews and extremely high sales for the 2011 MK reboot meant that a sequel was a bit of a no-brainer and that came in the form of 2015's tremendous Mortal Kombat 10, 
but it wasn't until the sequel to that, 2019's Mortal Kombat 11, that Shao Kahn showed his ugly mug again. Resurrected when Kronika, the Keeper of Time, started faffing about with time itself, as if she was Doc Emmett Brown or something, Shao Kahn returns to the current timeline, and is rather miffed to say the least, when he discovers that Kotal Khan has become the new Outworld ruler. Shao spends the game trying to overthrow Kotal Khan and take his rightful place back on the throne, but is eventually defeated by Katana, who ends up seceding Kotal as the Empress of Outworld herself. As huge and powerful as Shao Kahn is, he doesn't have a very impressive main event record, does he? It's almost like he's Mortal Kombat's version of the Big Show, or whatever he calls himself now. As well as the game, Shao Kahn has popped up in all sorts of other MK media such as the movies, comic books, graphic novels and animated series. In the first movie from 1995, he only appears very briefly at the end and is voiced by legendary actor Frank Welker who has lent his dulcet tones to over 860 screen and video game roles. Shao is referred to simply as the Emperor here, and we don't really see him properly, but he makes a full appearance and serves as the main antagonist of its 1997 sequel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Unfortunately for Shao Kahn and everyone else who was either involved with, or has ever seen this turgid excuse for a movie, it might have been best if he didn't bother as this dreadful mess has gone down in history as one of the worst commercially released films of all time. Yikes. He was played by Brian Thompson here, although Mr. Thompson would probably not like to be reminded of that, given that he has a comically low 4% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Yowie wowie. One of Shao Kahn's most interesting, or possibly ridiculous appearances, is in the logic-defying Mortal Kombat live tour stage show, which ran from 1995 to 1996, and saw our main man be played by both Jeffrey D. Harris and Ted Nordblum, both of whom had various other roles in the production. It sounds unbelievable that this could have ever happened, but unless you lived through the mid-90s, I don't think you could quite conceive how huge of a deal Mortal Kombat Mania was back then. The fact that this absolutely absurd concept got beyond the planning stage is a testament to that. Combining choreographed martial arts fighting with stage effects, lasers and other stunts, performers would prance around in cheap looking MK outfits while audiences looked on bewildered. Shao Kahn serves as the main villain in the show's plot, and this whole debacle ran for around six months. On to something more positive, 2011 saw the release of the both critically acclaimed and fan-friendly web series known as Mortal Kombat Legacy, which featured a maskless human-looking Shao Kahn in two episodes of the first season. Played by Canadian actor Alex Pornovic, the series delves into the history of Shao, exploring the days of his rule over Edenia, as well as going into great detail about his relationship with Katana and Melina. More recently, Shao has been featured in two episodes of Screw Attack's immensely popular YouTube show, Death Battle, which pits two characters from various separate universes together in a fight to the death. The outcome is determined by a logical examination of each character's strengths, weaknesses, powers and limitations based on their in-franchise history. The first episode saw our guy take on the man with the impeccable taste in hats, M. Bison, and the second episode saw him clash with everyone's favourite cheeky little red-haired murderous scamp, Akuma. The screw attack team actually determined that Shao Kahn won both of these contests, but as they are completely non-canon, I'm afraid they won't count against Shao's appalling main event record. Sorry. As well as being one of the hardest, most notoriously cheap and most evil final bosses out there, Shao Kahn has also featured highly in many best villain polls and is often in the conversation for best video game antagonists of all time. With his array of magical attacks and projectiles, fearsome close range martial arts techniques, powerful shoulder charges and shield and hammer combinations, Shao Kahn is both a fearsome opponent and a handy character to pick. Although, if we're honest, picking him is tantamount to cheating, and possibly a worse offence than picking Mewtwo in Pokemon Red and Blue. He was really seen as a top tier character during the mid-90s Mortal Kombat glory days, and was one of the most recognisable fighters of that era. Perhaps he has been a little overshadowed by some of today's big hitters, but back then he was certainly a formidable force to be reckoned with. Well, that about wraps it up for today's retrospective. I hope you have enjoyed being enlightened towards the history of Shao Kahn, a freaking legendary villain when it comes to the fighting game medium. 
If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and ensure that you watch my backlog of content. Videos like this are partially funded by the amazing people who back my work over on Patreon. And this week's Patreon question is from Chad Bonin, who asks, what's the best adaptation of a game into another medium? i.e. comics, movies, etc. This answer may be cheating slightly, but for me, it was when Donkey Kong got made into the King of Kong documentary, because as I mentioned, we all love a bloody good villain, and who was a more nefarious individual to star in any piece of media than Billy Mitchell, Mr. USA. Yeah. See you all soon.